Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so, so happy you're here. Um, I kind of took a little bit of a break. Um, so if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're joining me. Um, this audio is going to be just me kind of sharing from my heart, um, you know, just in the middle of my processing that um, the Lord has, yeah, I I've just been trying to process <laughs> a lot of the things that the Lord has been doing in this season. Um, and so this audio is just kind of that where I'm sharing um, that the Lord is vindicating. Like it is here. It is here. It is now. The tables have turned. Um, and so I'm sharing in this audio just how the Lord is beginning to do that for me. So with that being said, um, grab your favorite drink, your favorite snack, and y'all Go ahead and kick back and enjoy listening and I will see y'all soon. Hi guys. So I literally wanted to come on here really quick because, well, honestly, it's probably not going to be quick, but the timing that I need to get this up, I guess, is what I'm trying to say because, um, yeah, it's, it's been a minute since I've posted anything on here um, and y'all sorry if the audio is kind of like weird or wonky um i'm not using my microphone right now because i don't feel like getting it <laughs> i don't feel like getting it down um because obviously i'm in bed i'm laying down um but i just have to say okay um so much has happened so much has happened in these last couple of weeks, um, it really started, you know, towards the end of March, of course, and then these last couple of weeks has just, it, like, it's just been like a whirlwind for me, where God has literally been vindicating me for the first time in the way that he's been vindicating me. Like, of course, the Lord always vindicates me. He always has my back, but I'm seeing this on a public scale on a public platform with some prominent people okay and when i say <laughs> that this is just mind-blowing to me because it's been a long time coming it has been a long time coming to where you know i've had a lot of well, yeah, I, I've gone through such severe attacks, severe witchcraft attacks that have come against my anointing, that have come against my ability to see, hear, and discern the things that the Lord shows me and the Lord speaks to me because... You know, of course, when you're highly anointed, um, and yes, I said highly anointed because the Lord has anointed me, which is why I ran away from anything to do with being in ministry or being even in the prophetic. Because, you know, this, this was, yeah. So... I just want to come on here, uh, you know, come back, so to speak, uh, to continue the work that the Lord has had me to do. I just kind of, I've honestly, have been that busy to where um, I haven't really been able to sit down long enough uh, to you know, edit my audios and vlogs that I have still sitting in here. Like my, my phone storage is full again. So I actually to get, um, all of that stuff up and I'm praying that I get to do it tomorrow. I need to just sit, set some time, some intentional time to do it because, um, yeah, 
I need to get back to it. Um, plus, I was also dealing with yet another onslaught of attacks. Um, but this time, the attacks have subsided immediately because uh, the position that the Lord has ushered me into. Um, let's just say that the Lord has given me my divine helpers in this season. Apart of, you know, apart from, well, hold on. So yeah, my my divine assistants, my uh, destiny helpers, some some destiny helpers in this hour, you know, in this season of sisterhood. I'm going to say specifically sisterhood um, because this is very specific. Um, But the Lord has finally opened a major door for me to, like, it's just been so, I mean, I've been trying to process. (laughs) I really have been trying to process everything because I've never been here before. I've never been at this place of an elevated position to where um, all of the training that God has been doing, all of the processing that the Lord has taken me through is now uh, being in use. Like, like I'm no longer in training anymore. I'm no longer in a place where I still need to be processed. My, my processing has already ended. And God has uh, assured me, God has told me that, that my, my, my wilderness, so to speak, has, it has been declared over. And now that I recall, um, I'm going to say it was the exact day that I saw the dove um, that I, you know, vlogged about. Because I heard the Lord tell me that that exact day, uh, congratulations, you know, he, 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 he congratulated me. He said, job well done. You passed every single test with flying colors. And not only that, but um, you're, you're entering into that promised place, you know, your promised land. And the first part of that promised land because there's, there's going to be levels to me entering into my promised land um, to where... Hold on, sorry. Like, I, I, hold on. Okay, I had to pause really quick. So, um, sorry about that. I... Wow, you see what I mean? Like, the Lord had me to stop and read something really, really important. Um, so yeah. Okay. Now let me get back to what I was saying really quick. Um, cause I really don't have much time. It's really late as usual. Uh, it's three o'clock in the morning. So, um, oh my goodness. But let me just say this. I've been trying to put into words, but they're just, there's no words. There's no, there's no words to describe this feeling of finally being vindicated in this way because you see this is healing years and years of major betrayal within the church this is healing those gaping holes that were in my soul, you know, because they were soul wounds to where I was tired of, of feeling like I am, I'm mad, you know, like, like I'm going mad or I'm going crazy, um, for hearing and seeing the things that God speaks and shows to me. And yet nobody's here to point out and say, yes, Adriana, you are absolutely hearing 
correct. You are hearing right from the Lord. The only ways that I get confirmation is from the Lord himself. And he'll send to me prophets to confirm the words that he speaks to me. Trusted prophets. Because I don't just listen to anyone that just calls himself a prophet or prophetess or apostle or pastor or whomever. Friend, family. You know what I mean? Like I take absolutely every single thing up to God. Everything. I take it all before him. I take it all. You know, if someone comes to me, oh, I have a word for you. I immediately pray and I ask the Lord to confirm that word that if it's from him or if it's not and usually he'll immediately write that in there to confirm yes this is for me or no so y'all I have been in an intense training for the things that he is calling me into that he's called me into which is deliverance which is walking in levels of the glory of God. And with the glory, it comes with the onslaught of attacks from the enemy. Why? Because the enemy has a target against anyone that is truly anointed from God. And I'm not out here saying, you know, oh, I'm the most anointed. Absolutely not. No. That is, that is absolute pride an arrogance to think that I'm the only one that's so anointed and that's why I'm so attacked all the time. No, I don't think so. But what you guys got to understand is that I'm new to walking in the mantle of an apostle. This training I've been in is an apostolic training and it's only done by the Lord himself. This cannot be done by sitting up under someone's ministry this cannot be imparted by a man himself even though they may hold the title of prophet they may be walking in deliverance themselves or healing or whatever it is but but the impartation can only be done so when when you allow the lord to process you and to go through that process in the way that he wants and so it has been intense only because the lord has allowed it and it's just so amazing because um yesterday when i was washing laundry i met this lady uh here she, I, she's new here to this hotel um she was just doing her laundry as well and my my kids you know were kind of acting up so i was <laughs> in the middle of my mothering and trying to get laundry done you know just just trying to get things done and this woman um i kind of noticed she was kind of like you know studying me and i i just was like okay who, why, why does she keep glancing over me, at me like this? And there's, you know, at first I was just kind of like not really paying attention. But then the Lord was like, hey, you know, she's, um, what did he say? Oh my gosh. He, actually, no, he, he didn't say anything at first. I just felt this peace. I, I felt this like, you know, this lady is trying to make small talk. Um but I don't feel strange about it. You know, like I don't feel weirded out. I don't feel um like I just I, I yeah, I was like, you know, let me just engage more in conversation and find out. Um and so we're you know, we're we're small talking and boom, she starts literally prophesying to me. Accurately prof prophesying, uh confirming confirming very specific words like she said some key words right like that the lord would have had me wanting you know that the lord wanted me to hear as confirmation that this lady um was 
sent by him to simply just affirm me for that day to to encourage me that I, yes i am exactly still where i need to be you know because of course this whole time that i've been living here i have questioned i have doubted the lord i have literally i've thrown my fist up in the air at him i've just i've been just like so um bewildered and just perplexed perplexed as to why or how i could still be in a position or a place such as this like this is the the Like, this is the lowest, and I mean the lowest I've been in materially. But spiritually, I am just thriving spiritually. But I'm talking about that I'm at the lowest point in my life regarding materialistic things. You know, being without a car, being without a home, uh, being without a, 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 a place that I could call my own. You know what I mean? I've already experienced, I, I've experienced a lot of trauma as a teenager with with my mom having to help her and you know she was in and out of homelessness uh you know just a lot of things where i i I, my my whole my whole teenage years were robbed including all of my 20s were robbed and stolen from me And so now that I'm like finally coming out of a lot of that trauma, I'm now sitting in this place and I'm like, I just have to be still and know that he is God fighting for me, regardless of what I can currently see in my natural realm. But that the work that he's been doing has been spiritually done. Before I could cross into my inheritance that the Lord has promised me. My, my, the promises that God has made. Where it has not made sense. How I could go from bad to worse. And I... I know there are much, much worse situations than I'm currently going through. So I still count my blessings that I have a a nice, comfy, fluffy bed with fluffy pillows and a fluffy blankie (laughs) that I get to sleep on. Because unlike the apartment that uh, we were living in when we first moved here to Dallas, we had absolutely no furniture for an entire 15 months that we were up in that apartment I slept on a blow up mattress with my kids and then for a couple months there my my blow up mattress popped and (laughs) I just did not have the capacity to even try to fix it or you know I I was just like my gosh (laughs) so you would think right like that that would be low (laughs) But I was content. And I that's how I knew it was the Lord. Because the content, the contentment and the peace that I had in that apartment, like like for the most part, you know, when I broke away from my marriage, when I broke away and the Lord led me to to my divorce. Um yeah, I just I had this this peace, this supernatural ability to endure during that that situation and even now you know it just it still like bewilders me that I've been without a car for a little over a year now as a full grown adult with with three children that need me you know like it's just it's so it's a lot and then to try to still be faithful to the call that God has on my life 
when I want to do everything but that. (laughs) But see, God knew that in this season where I was going to be questioning and doubting him and, 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 and angry and just all kinds of stuff. But yet he has set up people, strangers. Doesn't it say that in Isaiah 60? How he'll send strangers to come and bless you? To remind you that that you're not forgotten? And I'm talking, these are people of the world, okay? Now, now the lady that I encountered yesterday, she was a full, full-blown believer. She is a minister at her church. She coaches women. She's a prophet. And, and that's how she said, I see you. And, and she said, no, I see you, see you. You're anointed. You're an anointed one. And then she started telling me a little bit about her story, a little bit about her background. And just, you know, it it wasn't anything too heavy or too deep or anything like that. You know, we weren't sitting there crying, you know, like, but it was just like, like God just saying like, yeah, you're not alone. And I'm sending this woman here to remind you of that. That, yes, you're still in the right position. Physically. Physically. You know, because I had, again, like, I, I pray this almost every 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 other day. I'm like, Lord, you know, I, I get anxious. I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety. And I know anxiety is not from God, but I'm just being transparent and I'm being real with you guys whoever is listening that yes even though I know all about deliverance I know all about you know these are real human like this is this is the human experience where I mean if anyone else was in this situation you know what I mean like I think I've been doing quite well (laughs) for the most part you know where I haven't I haven't turned my back on God I haven't resorted to drinking or you know sex or um drugs or any any anything um you know i haven't entangled myself you know like if anything this whole thing has been about god untangling me from all of those things where i've consecrated myself consecrated my body to become a living sacrifice unto him. And so this whole season for me, this all of March and now, you know, this month, I have never had the type of vindication that I've been receiving right now to where my gift like the Lord has said for years he's spoken to this he's spoken to me this for years and I've always wondered like God I oh my gosh I literally remember praying I didn't I didn't know this was going to be an emotional one y'all so I am so sorry. But really, no, I'm not. I'm not I'm not afraid to be vulnerable. I'm not afraid to cry on here. And I don't I don't care what anyone else thinks of me or says that oh you you shouldn't show you know you shouldn't cry. No, no. Mm-mm. So if that bothers you, you can just hop off and go find another channel. But over here we're we're keeping things real and raw and authentic because I've, I've lived through too much to sit here and act all nice and pretend that, like I don't go through stuff no no I'm going through it <laughs> which is why I'm not afraid to be vulnerable anymore I, I'm not afraid to show my wounds and scars and people may laugh at it 
people may may mock me for it people may scoff and and think that it's it's crazy oh well good good for you move along (laughs) but it's just it's so amazing because I just I feel like wow God like you you really do you really do have my back like you said you know because it's one it's one thing see and I'm about action I'm I'm about action okay and this is why I get frustrated with the Lord sometimes a lot of the times because I'm like God I'm tired of hearing it and no I'm not being a pessimist no I'm not being um ungrateful but it's like i need to see some action behind your words because i'm tired of just getting words i'm tired of hearing words 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 but i want to see the manifestation of your word in my life And this past weekend, I had one major victory. And that victory is God restoring back to me. He's been restoring back to me. my dignity because that was taken away he's restoring back to me my character which I never lost my character but other people have tried to destroy my character other people have made it their mission in life they've literally sold themselves over to the devil to ensure that I remained which is no longer but I'm saying past tense now because after this weekend baby let me tell you (laughs) the freedom and the deliverance that I received it, it, it is it is permanent permanent victory is permanent victory because one thing you got to understand is that when Jezebel the spirit Jezebel Athaliah spirits when they come to attack a true ordained apostle slash prophet because again I operate in the, the dual function both apostolic and prophetic The main attacks that come against me is my ability to see correctly, to hear correctly, to discern correctly. And what's crazy is that uh, one of the prophetic words that were spoken over me in New York was just that, that that the gift that God has given to me is one, one of the giftings is of great accuracy. And, and precision and so the attacks the onslaught of attacks that have come against me within the last seven years seven years because this really started um, actually you know what no it, it, it's it started when I first came into my prophetic mantle and mandate So this was in 2012 when I was only 18. My first Jezebel attack experience. Which was bad. (laughs) Because it was, you know, on a, a, I guess, more of a broader public scale. Um, Man, I I don't even want to go into it because it's just, it's too long of a story to even share it. But, um, you know... It was when God was giving me my first prophetic dreams, um, you know, all of that. And then 
it was just like boom like i was like surrounded by these jezebelic spirits and and operating through people and obviously the main one was my (laughs) ex-husband main main one you know because again the tactics that they use that the spirit use is to confuse you confuse your own perception of reality and for years and years and years I never had evidence I never had proof but only by what God was showing me and speaking to me through my dreams through through my visions through through prophetic words and other things like that but I never had physical evidence right away at least it, it may have taken some time but but then when the physical evidence would occur that jezebel spirit would come and rear its ugly head to to que- make you question that what you just saw wasn't actually what you just saw or heard or experienced it's it's really sickening it's a really nasty 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 spirit nasty principality power but it is not stronger than the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So tearing down this principality, it has been a fight. Literally the fight of my life. But now God is turning the tables upon my enemies in this hour. And I got to witness. Doesn't the word of God say that he will cause our enemies to flee before our very faces and this weekend i finally got to witness not that i'm sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and checking up oh oh did you do this already god no 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 absolutely not that is not my heart in fact i i grieve i mourn for my enemies because I I know the judgment that is hitting their life in this season and that is why I've been doing everything I can to stand in the gap through prayer (coughs) through (coughs) through um, trying to reason but but unfortunately you cannot reason with someone who has a reprobate mind You cannot reason with someone who has sold their soul to the devil to cause you harm and evil. There's no thing. And I, I, the Lord literally um, had one of my sisters tell me, (coughs) my sisters in Christ, she said, justice. She said, I hear the Lord saying, That justice shall be served before mercy. My God. Because you see what these enemies. They are Pharaoh spirits. Pharaoh. Haman spirit. (coughs) To where these type. They don't repent they don't repent you can cry for them all you want you can you can fast for I mean just you've got to understand the difference y'all yes it says to pray for our enemies yes it says to pray for those who persecute us yes It says to forgive those. However, when there's an enemy that has sold themselves over to the devil, like I said, there's only one fate for them. Because when when Pharaoh was given that chance to finally repent and, and turn away from his wickedness, after that last plague hit him still still he still didn't repent 
In fact, he blamed Moses. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Hold on. Take a sip of water. Um, <clears throat> probably because uh, I haven't done this much talking in a minute. <laughs> I mean, I, I have, but, like, not like this, you know. <clears throat> well, anyways, um, you know what? Let me just, in the name of Jesus, anything come in against my vocal cords and my throat right now, I bind your works in the name of Jesus, and I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I was saying... Pharaoh did not repent, nor did he even feel remorse. And that's what you have to understand. Whoever is listening, whomever needs this word, I mean, this this part at, at least, because it's not really a word that I'm on here, you know, preaching or anything like that. But let this be a part, I guess, like this part that I'm about to say. Because a lot of the times people get themselves in trouble by trying to beg someone who is wicked to come to Christ and to come to their senses. Absolutely not. At that point, you've got to just let them go. Let them leave them up to God. Because what you don't want to do is get in the way of God's judgment upon their life. There is no such thing as reasoning with these wicked ones. Why do you think Pharaoh only had one fate? Why do you think Goliath? You think it was, a, do, you, do, you, do you really think that it would have been appropriate for David to say, oh, let me just pray for him. L let, me, let me minister the word of God to Goliath, <laughs> this principality power that is never going to leave this region because he said to himself that he's going to be there day and night to taunt the Israelites mocking making threats against God's people would it have been appropriate for David to say I, I, let me talk to him L let me just reason with him L let me let me see if I could get through him get get through to him to make him change his mind maybe, maybe if I show him the love of God by, by welcoming him into my home, by, by feeding him, by praying with him, by, by checking, on, if, you know, calling him and sending him texts and saying, you know, God loves you, brother. Absolutely not. That's, that's madness. We don't reason with principalities. We don't reason with people that operate in works of darkness intentionally because there's a difference there's a difference when someone someone may be unknowingly practicing witchcraft against you and they don't even know but it's still witchcraft but there are those who are intentionally working against your life there there are those that want to take you out of this world there is no reasoning with them there's only one fate for goliath and it's goliath fall down and die fall down and die by fire Haman, there's only one fate for Haman. And that's hang yourself. 
Haman, go and hang yourself in the very gallows that you tried to prepare for me. Take that very same noose and tie it around your own neck and hang on how many how tall was that pole because he said he would he wanted that pole that he was planning to hang mordecai on to be so high up to where everyone everyone could see on a public scale but instead god overturned and it boomerang right back unto Haman. And he did not see that coming. Boy, he did not see that coming. He did not see that coming. He did not ever think that he his plan was going to be exposed. And not just exposed, but on a public scale, y'all. Pharaoh, the same fate. He had to drown in the midst of the sea and... What's sad about all of this, you guys, is that I just witnessed the very first, for the very first time in in the last couple of years, in in person. Which you know, I'm gonna say, I God has already dished out judgment upon my enemies in the past, and He's He's allowed me to see exactly the 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 judgment that was set upon them. But in, in this time and in this season, this is very different. This this is on a much higher level. A much, much higher level. And this time, I had backup. I had backup. And I had just my destiny helpers in this season who are also seasoned as I am. Who hear, see, and discern as accurately as I do. And all it took was for me to open up my mouth. And that is why, that is why the enemy fights my voice. Literally, that's why the enemy fights my voice because... The moment I speak, the word of God can flow. The word of God can be heard and felt. And see, the enemy has been waging against me and and, and trying to intimidate me and back me into a corner and cause fear and doubt and... All these other things because, you know, for fear of being wrong, for fear of hearing wrong. Why? Because I've been told that I've been told that, I, that oh, I don't think you're hearing right. I don't, I don't think you're seeing right. I don't think, you know, I, I just I don't know. I, I don't have peace in my spirit about this. I don't I don't, I don't know. I, I definitely I, I mean, I, the Lord hasn't showed me that. So. I, I don't I don't think you're hearing right. And it's like it, it's the same story, right? The one that's coming to my mind right now because I know there's so many other stories and instances like this. But the one that's coming to me right now is Mary and Joseph. Where an angel came to Mary. We all know the story. Come on. Everybody knows this story. But the angel came to Mary and said, Mary, you're your chosen one. You're highly favored. You're going you're to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. How? It's going to be done supernaturally. Joseph, my boy Joseph, on the other hand, <laughs> he questioned Mary's character. He questioned everything about her and, and was like, whoa how is that possible like like there's no way there's no way you're you're crazy i like i'm you know i'm just like interpreting in my own you know of course i'm sure he did not call her crazy but you you know he was he was definitely probably like "Mm, you sound a little insane 
because there's there's no such thing as what you're telling me. It's it's never been done. Therefore, it can't be. Right? Because that's what a lot of people do when God's about to do something new. When God is ushering in a whole new thing that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. People people question. People spectate. And, and scratch their heads. And like, mm, I've never heard of that. But see, an apostle is one that goes first. An apostle is a pioneer. So, so any pioneer, a, a, a pioneer is not going to have the same instruction as a settler. Okay, like a pioneer is one that goes first. So, the ones that go first, it's never been done before. That's why they're called a pioneer. So, Joseph um, wrote her off, literally rejected Mary, made her cry, made her go through what, what, what I'm sure is what I've been experiencing. Man, did I hear right? Did I hear right? And maybe she even started questioning, which I'm, that's where I've been. I started questioning my own encounter. If it was even from the Lord or was it, was it the devil? Was it, was it the enemy planting that seed? You know, was the enemy the one giving me that dream or giving me that vision? Absolutely not. Because it was a holy moment that I had when God gave to me the promise that he's made. It was a sanctified and Holy Spirit moment and I'll never forget. Never. It's something I will never forget. So so it, it cannot be. You know what I mean? Like there is absolutely no way that the enemy would have intruded because I felt a presence of angels literally in my room during this visitation because yes it was absolutely a visitation from the Lord and then I was fought against that visitation I was I was made to feel like like Mary I'm sure felt like my my own you know the the the, the man that God has <laughs> You know, like he rejected me. He he made me feel like I don't hear God. And see, look how God fought on behalf of Mary where she didn't have to go chasing him. She didn't have to go and, and say anything. God fought her battle for her and had the same angel that came to Mary go to Joseph and say, look, this is true. This is all true. Now, now go and assist her because you're ordained to. And so in the same sense, in the same sense where God has given me a big promise, th this is massive, you know, I've been carrying this, you know, baby, if you will, <laughs> this promise baby, <sighs> Jesus. He just told me again. So last night I even heard, I heard the Lord say, rainbow baby. My God, I'm a, oh Lord. And if you don't know what a rainbow baby is, a rainbow baby is one that comes after a devastating loss of a miscarriage. And the Lord said to me loud and clear yesterday in my time of prayer, he said, rainbow baby, like your rainbow baby is here. And I was like, at first I was like, rainbow baby, what? But no, I had to see with my eyes in this, you know, with eyes of the spirit. And he said, catch this in the spirit. Because see, my promise had died. It, 
it died before my very face it died before my very eyes I held the promise and it died and trying to recover from those promises has been really difficult it's been really hard and so the Lord just said that to me just now again about the rainbow baby which represents double a restoration double restoration double double um, double for my trouble and I'm, I'm finally witnessing the first portion because remember this is a double portion <laughs> Man, the Lord is so strategic. This is a double portion. So I'm walking into that first portion. And I'm just like in awe. I'm in awe because truthfully, I have been saying to the Lord, like, this is just too good to be true, Lord. This is, I just don't think it's going to happen for me. Like you've been saying it because I have, I've yet to see I've yet to see I've been standing and believing and contending and praying and fasting and consecrating and doing everything that the Lord has instructed me to do and it's like still still where's the manifestation where where in the natural can I point to to say wow and now finally it has come so I just wanted to process on here I know this was uh, I just I knew this was gonna be long but I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here and just say that this feels so liberating in every which way cuz y'all I just yeah, you don't understand what it's like, and that's okay. And, oh, and I don't know. Maybe you've gone through the same thing. I have no idea. But um, yeah, it's it's very liberating to know that that I'm not crazy after all. <laughs> that I am not crazy. That. I do see well. I, I have excellent eyes in the spirit. They have been trained. These, these are some trained spiritual eyes that the Lord has gifted me with. And it, it took some trials. It took some, some major testing. Major, 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 major testing. But that testing was only done so by obedience obedience has been the key to unlock these new levels and these new heights in the realm of the spirit to be able to have those eagle eyes where where you can see the mouse on the ground from a hundred feet high in the air you know what I mean so that's it you guys um I'm excited to come back on here. I know it took, like, I honestly, I can't uh, remember the last time. I know I posted a reel. Oh, no, sorry, not a reel. I posted a vlog. Um, so, yeah, I, I haven't done any other audios besides the one that I'm about to post. So, I'm getting this one up. For sure, yeah. So the last last time I uploaded anything was two weeks ago. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Um. So yeah, I have a lot more things coming out. I'm gonna be working on it uh, this week and be more intentional. But other than that, um, yeah. So I love you guys, and I will see y'all in the next audio. Bye. I